African wilderness of Botswana's Okavango Delta lives a band of elephants and people who have formed a family of their own, a family unlike any other on earth. Many of these elephants were orphaned at an early age in culling operations in overcrowded African reserves and shipped to lonely exile in zoos and circuses on other continents. One man's vision brought them together. Randall J. Moore is an American whose background included training circus elephants in Washington State, a skill he now uses to return African elephants to his safari concession in the African wilderness. In the 1980s, Randall brought a group of captive elephants over from North American zoos to feature in a South African film. He wanted to release the animals into South Africa's wilderness where he'd previously released two circus elephants. But the authorities prevented it. In desperation, he turned to a Botswana tour company with whom he pioneered African elephant-backed safari operations. Randall's hard work paid off. These orphans now belong to a family, the Abu family. But there's one thing missing. They have never had a baby of their own. Good girl, Shireen. What you doing? Shireeni is doing, a 12-year-old cow whom Randall hopes is pregnant. An elephant pregnancy is difficult to detect, but Shirini's swollen mammaries indicate to Randall that she may be just two months away from giving birth. Yes, I got no cubes yet. Your cubes are coming, huh? Your cubes are coming. Good girl, good girl. Good girl. Go play. You know where you, huh? That's your pile of food over there. Seba, what are you doing stealing Abu's food, huh? Nandi, study up. What do you do For now, though, three-year-old Seba, whose mother was shot in a culling operation in Kruger, is the baby, and revels in the spoiling he gets. Good boy. Good boy. Good Abu, boy. the lead bull, and in the prime of his life, has a friendship with Randall that goes back over a decade. Randall rescued Abu from an animal park in Texas, where he'd been in solitary confinement. Abu has spent most of his 40 years in captivity. So cigar breath again, yeah. This is Kathy, who, confined to a zoo in Canada, was along with Abu, the first of the herd to be shipped back to Africa. As the oldest female in a wild herd, she would be the matriarch. But here, in the Abu herd, the Mahouts adopt the matriarchal role, guiding the elephants in getting to know their surroundings. In the midday heat, they happily follow for a mud wallow in the river. Yeah, they get a mud bath every day, which keeps their skin in good condition. What you see here is the little baby Seba on the left there in the middle. And the, and the, three island mothers, but the, in the hierarchy, Shireni is the oldest. She's the one laying down, huh? And uh, so she gets her bath first if she wants, huh? Well, the interesting thing about the herd is none of them are related. All the youngsters came from the Kruger Park from culling operations. He knows he's the cutest thing on earth. And uh, these females all adore him. But just as soon as one of them gives birth, he will be deposed. In his 30 years of working with trained elephants, Randall has formed his own opinions about these animals. 
really, if you, you look at the whole an animal kingdom, you would be hard pressed to find another animal that, that is closer to human beings in terms of their social behavior than elephants. Breaking wind like humans. Daniela Blattler, a free-spirited Italian, was seduced by a glossy European magazine article on elephant-backed safaris. It didn't take her long to follow her dream. And I was to the hairdress, and I just was reading a magazine, and it was an article about riding elephant in this wilderness, and I said, wow. It's exactly what I was always dreaming. So I decided to write a letter to Randall. He called me back, and he said, if your passion for elephant is true, if you want, I give you the opportunity to come and work for me. And uh, the day after, I was here, and I never left. Abu has babies on his mind, but Kathy is yet to reach full-blown estrus and refuses his advances. On reaching full estrus, she'll be able to mate, however will not fall pregnant. Elephants start bearing babies in their early teens, but Kathy's isolation in Canada may have denied her that opportunity, or she might just be too old. And so the hopes of the family center on Shirini's pregnancy. Benny, a bull in his late 30s, was kept in a solitary cell in a zoo in Texas for nearly two decades. Randall discovered his plight and shipped him across with Abu and Kathy. In isolation in the United States, Benny rubbed his tusks to stumps against the concrete wall of his cell and injured one ear. Perhaps because he was deprived of interaction with other elephants, Benny is a shy and nervous bull and has taken a relatively long time to habituate to his new surroundings. Kathy, now in full estrus, is a daunting prospect for him. And instead of being excited into action, Benny urinates and shows his rump in an act of submission. In David Mabakane, Benny has a teacher and a friend whom he can trust. Thanks to David's patience and guidance, Benny can now travel the Okavango wilds without fear. If you would know he was, was an elephant, then he could have been fine, but he never knew he was an elephant. He's been by himself in the zoo, he never see other elephants and he only met up with the other elephants when he brought them from the States. Even if you see a bird or a rat walking by in front of him, he'll throw his trunk onto it. He's a nervous elephant. He's nervous. A perimeter electric fence protects the herd from predators and wild elephants. Across from Benny in the enclosure, Seba, the baby, is first to bed down for the night. Day breaks and Randall greets Abu and the other elephants. Good boy. How's it, Tondo? How are you, boy? Okay, Dave, how, how long has it been since Tondo's had a saddle on? Randall's philanthropy does not come cheap, and he and his family must work for their freedom. Abu, Benny, Kathy, and the other adults make a living for the herd by carrying tourists through Botswana's Okavango Delta. Both elephants and mahouts need to be trained for safaris. First, they have to have a feeling for the elephant. They have to understand uh, the elephant. They have to develop a bond with them, okay? And they have to really just, it's a feeling. When you're up there driving that elephant, it goes from the seat of your pants right through his neck. And 
you know, you can't be afraid, first of all, they can sense fear, okay, you have to have confidence, and so that's why, you know, we at least, normally it takes at least a year or two in some cases to get these people ready to have the confidence to move that elephant and to take him around through, through the wilds of Africa. Safely. Remember, the one thing we don't do is go up to elephants alone, huh? Head back, turn your head sideways and down the slide, okay? Just like preschool. Okay, Abu Riders, I think we'll put you up front. You're the first. Good. Okay, hold on. Ready, down. Okay. And don't be afraid. These saddles okay. are made out of hardwood and steel. You're not going to break them. Okay. Up. Turn the oar. Steady. The once captive elephants follow paths of their own making. Every day, the elephants learn more about the Okavango's wildlife and ways, going where no safari vehicle could go. It's a journey of discovery for both elephant and mahout. Ready, move up. With a ton of pressure on each foot, a thorn causes Kathy serious discomfort. An elephant's digestive system is inefficient, and to sustain their mass, they must feed for as much as 20 hours a day. The herd returns to the enclosure, where a ton of freshly cut mapani branches will sustain them through the night feed. They are fitted with ankle chains to keep them out of trouble during the wee hours, when even the most dedicated mahouts must sleep and Cherini could give birth at any time. The herd might quite possibly awake in the morning to a new member. Early morning at the enclosure finds Daniela in communion with a trainee elephant named Tando, an orphan from a Kruger cull. They've shared five years of friendship together, but Tando is now reaching adolescence and the carefree friendship must come to an end. I was in the bush, laying down, trying to rest. He suddenly came around me, touching me with his trunk. So I just look at him and I say, listen, my friend, if you want to do something good today, just come next to me and lay down so that we can have a siesta together. So he just looked at me, came on my side, lay flat, put his trunk on my belly and uh, we had our Ten very incredible moment together that I will never forget. Now that Tando is nearing adulthood, he needs to work for a living and so begins training at Randall's school. Do you have to be trained to work with them to know the elephant? You start down below, you start cleaning behind him, cleaning all the food and you cleaning them and it's where you can get the trust and the elephants get to know you, get to smell your scent and then it's where you can get to become an elephant trainer. We've had a few mahouts injured and uh, you can go right back to them making mistakes 
on their own when they shouldn't have. Billy received severe injuries when after extended leave, he walked up to Benny without reintroducing himself. Nice tattoo, Billy. <laughs> Get over and move up. Move up. Buddy, out, Joe. Out, Joe. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. I'll be right. Just lay, lay down, Joe. Okay. He's got a little bit shorter tusk, so it's a little harder to use. Here, a steel Abu. ring protects Abu's tusk from splitting Abu. further and spreading Abu. to the nerve. It okay. also serves as a reminder okay. of a tussle with a wild okay. elephant. Randall is tough and disciplined on the outside, an exterior that belies a soft call. For everyone's safety and survival, he must be self-assured and strong. However, his discipline is always carried out with a love for the elephants and a respect for the Mahout's safety. Well, if you don't have any discipline, you don't, you don't have any control. And, uh, you know, they're a big animal. You're, you're dealing with a, the world's largest land mammal. With that trunk, they can do some serious damage and tusk. Uh, you know, we're, we're pretty frail compared to an elephant, so you have to have discipline. I hate discipline. <laughs> I like discipline till a point, but if you want to go, I like to tell him just go and come back. Come on. Daniela still keeps contact with Tando, but now from a distance. I go to see him, I actually look at him every day from my tent, long time, and just and I speak with him from far away, but I actually agree that it's not good that I, I go and see him. I just confuse his mind. It's, it's a school now. Hey, Tendo, come here. Come here. Come here, take it. Come here. David's deep knowledge of elephants has been earned over a decade with the Abu herd. He was first hired as a truck driver, but Randall noted his uncanny rapport with elephants, and it wasn't long before David became a mahout, and his life became intertwined with theirs. The school is part of Randall's bigger vision to bring captive elephants back to Africa and rehabilitate them for a life in the wilds. David and Tando's confidence in each other grows day by day. Tando is ready to carry a tourist, signifying an end to his childhood with Daniela. Daniela knows she must let go, but she can't shake the feeling that she's abandoning a child. The good time playing and staying free all the day and stay just with me is finished. I don't know, it's a strange feeling coming through between me and him. Trunk, trunk, no trunk. Come on, like you can do. He doesn't understand what happened. Why did I left him suddenly? Like you can do. Give him the hand. Trunk, Sad trunk. as it may be, trunk. the end of her bond with Tando could open up a new relationship with Shirini, the pregnant young female. Trunk. Trunk. You are a good boy. Hmm? You're my boy. African elephants were once thought to be untrainable. Pioneers of the Belgian Congo proved otherwise. Well, in the real early days, uh, I saw some footage of Gongol and Abodio and what, what the Belgians had accomplished up in what was then known as Zaire. 
So they were riding them. They weren't doing elephant back safaris, but uh, they certainly were riding them. One of them has got the scent of the men. Up goes the trunk, out go the ears. This animal is alarmed, and as soon as one is alarmed, the sense of fear seems to communicate itself from one animal to the other. Once the herd is in flight, the elephant's instinct seems to be keep up at all costs with the herd. It is very seldom that they turn and attack. Only when a calf is in danger does its call bring the mother to its help. What chance have we to photograph the actual capture? This headlong pursuit may last hours. There goes the first rope. It's on. He's got it around a tree, and now the elephant feels himself caught and turns against the men. The men swarm around him, keeping him turning around the tree to tauten the rope. They're trying to get more ropes on him to hold him until the heavier ropes can be brought out. Once broken from the wild, these elephants were put to work carrying logs and pulling plows. And then a strange thing happens. As soon as he feels their bodies against his, he calms down. He thinks he's back with the herd and pays no attention to the men so close to him that they could touch him. If I had my way, I would release all of these elephants. And in fact, at some point in time during their, their lives and my life, I would like to do that. Okay, I would like to do it here in this area. And I've actually put forth a proposal to the government. At the moment, the what if factor is getting in the way. You know, what if it, one get, wanders into some camp and what if he causes a problem, okay? So the politics yet are blocking us. But as you know, I'm a very stubborn person and I'm gonna keep hammering away. Stretch it out, stretch it out right, steady down. And I hope at one point that, yeah, that Abu will be released in this area. You know, he has paid his way, his dues. You know, we built this business. Elephant Back Safaris was built literally on Abu's back. If there were 10 million elephants left in Africa, huh? you'd be one in 10 million. Steady down. If Randall manages to get permission to release Abu, it won't be the first time right. that he set elephants free. And steady. I've done it before with Durgan Walla. It's difficult when you have a, a huge relationship that's based on many years of work. But, I mean, it's like your kids. You, would want, you want the best for your kids, and the best would be right back where they began their life in the wild. I'll just have to accept the fact that they're on their own, and they're going one way, and I'm going my own way. I hope that sometime in the near future, we can find a Kruger bull, and maybe in a few years' time, we'll see Durga and Walla with their own babies as well. I really feel confident about this release. I think the elephants will do well, and I look forward to coming back over the next 30 years, watching and enjoying them in the Plansburg Reserve. Randy Moore's 12-year odyssey with the two African elephants was over, taking them from circus life in the United States back to the African bush where they were born amounted to an enormous task filled with pitfalls, but now at last, successful. Uh, I had an amazing, amazing encounter with Awala uh, last year when she was bitten by a hippo. And... Um, the, the park authorities called me up. They had, they had darted her five times, and the leg would swell in three times the uh, normal size of that leg. I hadn't made contact with this elephant but one time in 17 years. So I didn't know, if she going to remember me? Am I going to be a friend, foe? What's going on? I'm conjuring up all these questions in my mind as I'm flying to Belansburg. I arrived, she's alone up in this secluded valley. I said, okay, I'm going up there alone. I call her up, she comes right to me, she follows me over alongside the vehicle. Sibylla Quant, a veterinarian and elephant expert, joined Randall to help save Owala's life. 
what I find is pretty horrific. It's uh, one of the worst wounds I've seen on an elephant. We're able to treat here with no anesthesia whatsoever and um, clean up the wound. She's fully recovered and about two months after we stopped the last um, um, time working with her, she gave birth to a healthy little baby bull. Not far from the Abu family, a herd of wild elephants passes by. What started as a frolic for this baby could end in tragedy. Fortunately, it has its elders to count on. But had the baby become hopelessly mired, the herd would have been forced to leave it behind. In the open, elephant calves are vulnerable to attack from lions and other predators. If the herd were not around to protect the calf, a potentially life-threatening situation could arise. An abandoned calf's only chance of survival would be adoption into a passing herd. In the sheltered piece of the enclosure, no such worries trouble the Abu herd. For Randall and his team, the Abu family is a collection of hopes and dreams. And one morning, their greatest hope is fulfilled. A gift has arrived in the night. Shirini, the young cow, has given birth to her first baby, a bull named Wantu, Setswana for firstborn. And it was some of the highest moments in my life to watch him go, her take this little baby, little bull, and name Wantu, which is firstborn to take him around and introduce him to the other family members was, was incredible. To watch him, her walk out and supervise his first mud bath. No one knows for certain the identity of Wantu's father, but it's likely that a wild bull was attracted to Shirini, perhaps during a feeding out in the bush. Yet, there's something troubling the herd's human members. Wantu is not the size he should be. As sometimes happens with the first calf of a young cow, he has been born premature. Randall's old friend and doctor to the Abu herd, Sibylla Quant, flies up from South Africa to help Wantu. Wantu seems to be okay under Shirini's care, but Sibylla is worried that the tiny elephant, unable to reach his mother's nipples, will not get the nutrition he desperately needs. Seba's concerns are very different. The new addition to the herd means that he is no longer the darling of the family. And for once, no one's paying attention to his antics. Daniela, delighted that she has a replacement for Tandor, 
is concerned about Wantu's condition. Unable to suckle the two gallons of milk an infant elephant needs every day, he's growing weaker. A specially made blanket keeps him warm to conserve energy. Shirini looks anxious, but she seems to understand the human's desire to help and looks on patiently while they minister to her infant. It could be that her trust in them overrides the powerful instinct to protect her calf at all costs. Wantu tries time and again to reach the life-giving nipples. They see he's not succeeding, so Sibylla lends a helping hand. If Shirini were a wild elephant, her calf would probably not have survived long after birth. But here with the Abu family, Wantu has a fighting chance. David joins the team as they tend Wantu and feed him round the clock. Not much is known about the care of a premature elephant, so they have to invent new techniques as they go along. A syringe fitted with an artificial nipple and supplement milk formula are used to feed him. Next one. Next one. Okay, you're going to get maybe just a little bit more here out of this one. I mean, that's pretty full, but you're going to get just a tiny amount, maybe 10 cc's. It's wichtig, dass man eben Sucking. Racked by diarrhea, he's absorbing little nourishment. Let's just stay with it, stay with it, there's a good thing. Everything out and let him up. Let him go back. Everything out and let him up. What's, what's... Watch my head. Belly button's a lot cleaner, right, huh? Good girl. Good girl. Meanwhile, there's work to be done. The rest of the elephants must go on safari, which also allows them to feed and drink, leaving Daniela and Sibylla to look after Wanto. Wanto's body has rejected the milk formula and he's becoming dehydrated. Shirini helps to lift him to his feet, but his attempts to suckle are futile. Wanto, here, trunk up. Sibylla is increasingly concerned about his condition. The milk collected by hand is not enough to supply Wanto and the milk formula is proving indigestible. Shirini reassuringly nudges little Wanto with her foot.
Daniela gives her all the comforting she can. Wanto is a week old, and his condition is still deteriorating. Sibylla decides to rehydrate him with an intravenous drip of saline solution. Shirini behaves as though she knows her calf's in pain, but she overrides her natural instinct to lash out, placing her trust in the human caretakers. Leave him. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. Now steady. Antibiotics are used to fight the diarrhea. An elephant's trunk is remarkable in the many functions it serves, and Wanto's little trunk is constantly being monitored by Sibylla. Before he wants to get up and go, I'd rather want to get, get to some, some more into him. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Out in the bush, Seba sees his chance to steal grain cubes from the vehicle, damaging the paintwork in the process. Randall is unimpressed and scolds him as if he were an Ow. errant son. Ow. Now you move back. Move back. You even think about messing up that vehicle. Huh? What's the matter with you? What is the matter with you, huh? Huh? Want to mess up something? Go find a tree. Go find a tree. What's the matter? Hmm? Back in the enclosure, Wanto's loss of fluids makes him especially vulnerable to hypothermia. This, at least, is something they can fight. Hot water bottles, blankets, and warm cuddling all help to keep Wanto warm. But they cannot help him eat, and Wanto's attempts to suckle are in vain. The premature birth has left his skin improperly formed, and he's developed a chafe above his eyes from trying to suckle. For about 20 months, Shirini carried Wanto in her womb, two months short of the full gestation period. These two months could mean the difference between survival and death. Premature calves of young cows often fail to survive their first year in the wild. Elephant mothers learn how to care for their offspring from each other. Now Shirini's human parents can only offer comfort, tenderness 
and tears. It's much better than yesterday. She doesn't like it all. Gets disturbed. Um, and I wouldn't worry about the sun. It's good for you. She would like to make. She's screaming is it just could stop to shit like this it was in the liquid. Seba misses out on his good night ritual with Daniela and the team. Their focus is on Shirini and Wanda. But compared to human babies, normal human baby, you can feed him in the mouth, that's for sure. But the, how do you call the queen? A blanket may keep out the night chill but it cannot ward off a deeper cold. What they don't know is that Wanta's vital organs are fatally underdeveloped. The battle they are fighting is one they cannot win. Wanta's 13th day will be his last. <coughs> the Abu herd come one by one to say goodbye to their firstborn. Young female was her firstborn. Uh, he was delivered fine, but he was too prem it was premature, and it just had happened. Wantu is buried within sight of where he was born and where Sharini sleeps at night. Life cannot pause long for death in the African bush, and neither can the life of the Abu family. <laughs> Elephant memories are long. Perhaps Wanto's valiant 13 days are now a part of the herd's collective memory. But the elephants cannot afford to mourn for long. They are nomadic by nature and must keep moving in their quest for fresh feed.
In the Abu herd, the lives of the humans and the elephants are intertwined, and both must go on, even in the wake of little Wanta's death. The Okavango still has something good to offer the Abu herd. It arrives like a gift from the elephant gods. A wild calf has become lost from its mother's herd, and miraculously, the Abu family has found it. David points out the wounds on the little cow's trunk, an injury from a close shave with, quite likely, a crocodile. They name her Kitty Metsi. I'm lost in Setswana. As you can see, the trunks, uh, we don't know what might have caught her there, even there's two wounds, but they're coming much better. Daniela and the Mahouts adopt Kitimetsi into their special care. Oranges are treats used to teach her the trunk up position her first lesson in living with people. It's a safety drill, used to prevent the elephants from wielding their trunks as a weapon. She's already learned that treats come in trainers' pockets. On his return from leave in Sri Lanka, Mahut Simon Pereira draws on a lifetime's experience with elephants as he dresses Kitimetsi's wounds. Within a few days, they've almost healed. No one will ever know how Kitimetsi came to be lost from a natural herd, but the people of the Abu family consider her a blessing. Everyone is amazed at how quickly she adopts the human members of the Abu family as her own. Kitimetsi is rapidly falling into the ways of her new family taking a cue from the other elephants. Simon and Shirini take Kitimetsi from the safety of the boma to be introduced to two young cows. It's Kitimetsi's first foray into the wilderness since her rescue. The whole family turns out to witness the event. The teenage cows are beside themselves when they spot the young calf. They race over to greet her. Kitty Metsi appears overwhelmed by their unbridled exuberance. Seba seems to know something is going on. Little does he realize that he's once again about to be replaced by a younger newcomer. This time for good. One of the teenage cows gently moves between Seba and the new object of her affection. Seba knows he's lost his place as the baby of the herd and tries to assert himself with one of the young females. It's an uneven match. Kitimetsi looks on with innocent curiosity. In the wild, Seba would be testing his strength against other young bulls. In his Abu herd upbringing, he'll soon be starting at Randall School. Elephants have a remarkable capacity to learn. As for the Abu family, 
They are not only learning to live with humans, but also how to survive in the wild land where they were born. They are learning from their triumphs as well as their tragedies. And now they have a new generation to teach. Twenty-two months after this filming was finished, Shirini gave birth again, this time to a healthy baby bull. He's been named Pula, rain in the Setswana language, a word of blessing, fertility and hope. <laughs> 